You've been a long time guest on our channel ever since we were reluctant preppers and the focus we've often had with you is about physical preparedness and uh, weapons and uh, precious metals and other other forms of preparedness wide ranging frankly across many uh, forms and aspects of self-reliance etc there seems to be a coming I guess a cusp of concern around risks that we're facing due to changes in our financial world, uh, focusing partly on the advent of the cashless society, central bank digital currencies, complete loss of privacy and freedom to uh, basically live our, our financial lives holding onto the fruits of our labor in ways that are stable and preserve purchasing power and give us the privacy and flexibility to do that as we see fit. That's one focus that uh, several viewers had submitted questions about. We want to talk about that with you. The second is about whether the upcoming midterm elections are likely to be an inflection point that's tomorrow uh, and uh, by the time this airs will be quite current uh, whether those are likely to be a, a tipping point or a shift in the balance of power or if it's just a changing of the guard between uh, two wings of the same bird that uh, the part of the collectivist uh, sort of front that's been uh, basically absorbing all of our freedoms and privacies over the past couple of decades and beyond. Uh, we'd like to get you your way in on the impact of the midterms. So could we start off with that question about the change in our financial lives and how close you believe a major uh, impact is coming to our financial lives uh, due to unfolding events in, in the uh, debt, the, the currency markets, etc., and central bank digital currencies being part of that. Uh, if you want to give us kind of your helicopter's eye view of the landscape first, and then we have some specific questions about preparedness in the face of that that have been submitted by viewers. Sure. Well, I guess to begin with, I think from a 30,000 foot view, uh, we are rapidly approaching a recession. The uh, Federal Reserve has gone into panic mode watching uh, inflation basically get away from them. Uh, I think our current Federal Reserve Chairman, Jerome Powell, is um, not likely to stay the course on a tight money environment. He's basically no Paul Volcker. Back uh, during the Carter administration, the um, uh, the chairman of the Federal Reserve was Paul Volcker, and he had the intestinal fortitude to raise interest rates to the same level to match inflation, to, to really stop inflation. I don't think that Jerome Powell is going to have those kind of guts. And we'll see a pivot at some point, most likely next spring or next summer, uh, certainly before the end of the Biden administration. And uh, when that happens, that's going to do several things. One is it's going to absolutely kill the um, real estate market um, because even with interest rates uh, mm -hmm. dropping, everyone's going to see it as a signal for mass inflation. And basically the equities markets, the real estate market, uh, the, uh, the private car ownership market, and, and the debt that goes along with that, all of those you would think would um, begin to recover as interest rates start to drop again. But I don't see that happening. I think it's going to be seen as capitulation. And the markets, I think, are going to react very badly. Now, as for central bank digital currencies, I think those are definitely in the works. You can see uh, the, the war drums are, are beating right now against private cryptos, because obviously as the governments get ready to release uh, their sovereign cryptos, the CBDCs, uh, they hate competition. And they're going to want to run all of the private cryptos out of the market by by regulation, by taxation, and most importantly, by regulation of the 
crypto exchanges. I think that's where they're going to have the greatest impact. And if there's basically no place to exchange crypto, it's going to kill crypto. And we'll see the price of uh, all the major cryptos um, with Bitcoin, and Ethereum and, and whatever. Uh, the bottom's just going to drop out of those at that point. Once they declare war on the cryptos, it's all over for private cryptos, at least here in the United States. As people have been asking how they can prepare for what they see as a coming uh, convulsive breakdown of our existing financial system, we've certainly seen, uh, as you mentioned, inflation a few moments ago, loss of purchasing power of the dollar, uh, just a hockey stick ramp up in the creation of currency over the past two and a half years, and and this rise in inflation that shows no sign of abating anytime soon. People are awakening to the fact of the collapsing value of anything denominated in dollars. There's a question specifically from a viewer on that is, what are the, from uh, Frickendel Special says, what are the most important things you can do to live outside the system of CBDCs? Wow. <laughs> it will be tough because once a central bank digital currency is put in place, it's just a short matter of time before they ban the use of paper currency. And there'll probably be extensive controls put on the use of foreign paper currency within the United States and also moving paper currency or even crypto for that matter uh, in or out of the United States. They basically want CBDC uh, the, the digital dollar to be the only game in town. And if and when that happens, if they ban paper currencies and they make uh, coinage obsolete, I think the way they'll make them obsolete is basically to declare them null and void and basically give the green light for anyone to melt down their old coinage. Uh, once that happens, it you know, all bets are off in, in terms of of privacy, because unlike private cryptos, sovereign cryptos um, have full transparency to the government. With private cryptos, you have an opaque market. Basically, the only ones who know what's going on are the buyer and the seller in that market, whoever's transferring those funds. Uh, it's all private. With a sovereign crypto with a central bank digital currency is completely transparent. It's transparent for tax purposes. It's transparent for uh, all sorts of legislative purposes. If, um, if the nanny state decides that you are drinking too many sugary drinks, they'll, they'll, they can literally at the, at the, uh, at the flip of a switch or with the activation by a, a AI, artificial intelligence, they can limit your purchases of any number of different goods. If they think you've bought too much food that month, you get cut off. If you think you've, uh, you shouldn't have the right to travel for some reason, uh, you won't be able to buy an air airplane ticket or a train ticket or gasoline. They can build all that into the system. Essentially, it's like the, the Chinese social credit score system run amok. So CBDCs uh, represent a huge loss of freedom to people and certainly a loss of privacy. And the only way around it Unfortunately, if they do what I think they're going to do, which is uh, make the old paper currency obsolete and ban the use of foreign currencies and cryptocurrencies, is barter. And unfortunately, uh, though barter is a, a wonderful system and a longtime traditional system, logistically, it's a nightmare. Because unless you're dealing locally, how can you barter physical goods over a long distance? It just isn't practicable. So that's where I stand on um, CBDCs. Uh, I think people should be prepared to barter. They should be prepared to live outside the system. And for the, to be able to barter, you need to have barter goods. 
So that means um, not just having a great big fuel storage tank for your own vehicles, but buying a whole bunch of, of extra gas cans so that you can literally barter gasoline and diesel fuel. Uh, it means stocking up on ammunition for all the guns you own and more, because you want to the, the the more is common caliber ammunition that would be useful for barter things uh, the ammunition that you think that your neighbors might need and be willing to tr to trade for the other things that you need in barter. So think ahead and think through all of the potential barter transactions that you'll have to make. And for those who want to live completely outside of the system, who refuse to even get a CBDC account, that's going to leave you in a very difficult situation because you still have to be able to pay your property taxes and things like car registration and insurance and your utility bills. So try to identify alternative ways to make those transactions, either by means of barter in precious metals or ammunition or whatever with a, a friend or a neighbor or a fellow church congregate who is in the system who can make those payments for, for you out of their CBDC funds. You'd be bartering with them probably at a slight loss and then they would be making those payments for you. Otherwise, without making those payments, you'd become persona non grata very quickly. And given the history of taxing officials here in the United States, you would also become homeless in short order.